So this little example will demonstrate that if you have two goods that are perfect substitutes, then preferences are homothetic. Remember, goods are perfect substitutes if the indifference curves are straight lines. I have drawn two indifference curves, one here and one here. In these examples, the indifference curves have a slope of minus one, which means that the consumer is willing to treat them in a one-to-one -one ratio. All that the consumer cares about is the total quantity of good one and good two together. And in the first inner indifference curve, that quantity is 10 for all points on the indifference curve. So I have picked two bundles on the indifference curve arbitrary. So let's say that this is my X bundle and this is my Y bundle. The X bundle is something like 3,7 and the Y bundle something like 7,3. If I double my X bundle, I will get to this one. Let's just call it 2X. And if I double my Y bundle, I will get to this one. Let's call that 2Y. Well, if the X and the Y bundle are on the same indifference curve, the 2X and the 2Y bundle must be on the same indifference curve. That simple geometry, the slope of a straight line between X and Y must be equal to the slope of the straight line between 2X and 2Y. Here is the bundle 3x where I have tripled each amount of the original x bundle. And here is the 3y bundle. These two bundles will also lie on the same indifference curve. Here is one half of my x bundle, one half of my y bundle. As you can see, multiplying the quantity of each good in the x bundle will always land you on this blue curve. While if you multiply the quantity of each good in the Y bundle by the same constant, then you will end up on this red curve. But no matter which quantity you multiply X and Y with, you will end up with two bundles on the same indifference curve. So that's the geometric sort of intuitive argument. If you prefer a mathematical argument, then it goes something like this. We know that we can always represent perfect substitutes with a utility function written as a times x1 plus b times x2, where a and b are positive constants. If the consumer is willing to substitute the goods in a one-to-one -one ratio, as in this example, then we can pick a to be equal to one and b to be equal to one. All we need to do to prove that preferences are homothetic is to show that this utility function is homogeneous of degree one. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Just replace x1 and x2 by cx1 and cx2. You get a times c times x1 plus b times c times x2. We can factor out the c and that's ax1 plus bx2, which is indeed equal to c times u of x1 x2. U is homogeneous of degree one, therefore preferences are homothetic. Here is another example of homothetic preferences. If we have two goods that the consumer considers to be perfect complements, then preferences are homothetic. You can do the same type of geometrical argument as we did for goods that were perfect substitutes, but it's fairly similar, so I will skip that. Let's just instead prove that if two goods are perfect complements, then they can be represented by a utility function that's homogeneous of degree one. We know that if two goods are perfect complements, then they can be represented by the following utility function, min of a positive constant A times X1 and another positive constant B times X2. If I always consume the goods in pairs, then we can pick A and B to be equal to one. So let's evaluate U of C times X1, C times X2. That's the min of A times C times X1, B times C times X2. Let's reverse the order of A and C and write this as C times AX1, C times BX2. Now, if A times X1 is less than B times X2, then this min becomes a x1. Well, in that case, since c is a strictly positive constant, c times a x1 must be less than c times b x2, and this min becomes c times a x1, which is precisely c times the utility function of x1 comma x2. If a x1 is bigger than b x2, a similar type of argument will show that this will still hold. 
the utility function is homogeneous of degree 1 and preferences are homothetic. We can also conclude that Cobb Douglas preferences are homothetic. Cobb Douglas preferences can be represented by a normalized Cobb Douglas utility function like this one. All we have to do is to show that this function is indeed homogeneous of degree 1. That's not so difficult, just a little bit of algebra y of cx1 cx2 that's equal to cx1 all raised to a over a plus b times cx2 b over a plus b in the first term i have a power where the base is the product of two terms so i can split this into two powers c raised to a over a plus b times x1 a a plus b we do the same thing with the second term, c, b over a plus b, times x to b over a plus b. Now you can probably see how this goes. If I do this term and multiply it by this, then all I need to do is to add the exponents, so that's c, a over a plus b, plus b over a plus b. x1, a over a plus b, x2, b over a plus b. Well, this term here, the exponent, that's just a plus b over a plus b. So that's just 1. And this comes out to be c times x1 a a plus b, x2 b a plus b, which is precisely what we're looking for. c times the utility function evaluated at x1 comma x2. This proves that the utility function is homogeneous of degree 1 and that all Cobb-Douglas preferences are homothetic. If, for example, you double your consumption of both goods with a normalized Cobb-Douglas utility function, that will precisely double the utility.